Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Real Influencers Project. I'm your host, Craig Reynolds. And with me today is arguably one of the most stylish BMX riders in the history of the sport, someone that has graced the covers of magazines and has was wickedly fast, Mr. Daryl Young. Dude, it is an honor and a privilege to have you on today. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Oh, glad to be here. When I was younger, you were like the benchmark for style, right? Wicked fast, no question, right? But your your style was so good and unique. It was it was your own thing, right? Like it was so fun to watch you ride a bike that you know well, everyone wanted to ride like you. Wow. Um that's I feel honored. I feel honored. I you know, I just felt I was riding a bike just like anybody else, but for some reason, people always say, oh, dude, no, it's the way you ride it. <laughs> That's it. That's exactly it, right? And what's interesting is that speed or your, your style didn't sacrifice your speed or vice versa. You still had wicked speed, but you just made it look so good when you did it. You're like, oh, man, you see how you turn the bars right there? Yeah. When I come out of the turn, I want to pick it up really high and turn it in and pedal out of the corner on that wheelie because that's what Daryl does. Oh, wow. Only one I couldn't get into was the Browning two-speed. That's the only thing where I was like, I'm good. I'm not going to – I'm not good. I'm good without two two gears. Understandable. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to get to that in a little bit because I want to know how how you got to that point. But first, give me a little background about how you got into racing BMX bikes and who was that influence that got you into it. Oh, that's easy. Uh, A friend of mine, Tim Renan, that I grew up with him in the neighborhood and he was one of the BMX guys. And um, he had an actual BMX track built in his parents' orchard, little, you know, a little tiny practice track and all his kids would go and ride. And uh, one year he, he kept going to the race. I kept missing out on it. You know, I'd show up at his house on Saturday, his mom would be like, oh, he went to the races. Oh, you know. And uh, so the next year he told me, no, this year you're going you're going, he didn't give me a choice, you know, and, uh, and that's all it took. And I was hooked, you know, went to the first race and was like, Oh, this is it. I I'm digging this. And, uh, so then from that point on, um, I always had a practice track. I had friends to ride with and, and that's what really got me started. It was my buddy, Tim Renan. He, he definitely was an influence for me. Did and, you win your first race? Yeah, I did actually. Um, it was, God, it was a, it was actual Rose Festival regional race. So it was like a big to do. I had no clue, and uh, it was a two day race. And I come from a you know religious family, so they raced on Saturdays. But this race was a two day race. So my friend came home with me that first night, and he's like, "He did really good, Mrs. Young. You you gotta let him skip church tomorrow." <laughs> So he can go to, you know, day two. He's going to win it. I'm telling you, he can win this thing. And so, you know, my parents, you know, begrudgingly, you know, okay, this one time we'll let you, you know. And and so I did. I went and I ended up winning. And then I know it was like my third race. I started getting grief from the guys in the novice class. They felt I needed to move up. (laughs) And I started getting called a cherry picker, you know, a sandbagger, all that stuff. And so I did, I said, okay, fine. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take this. And I moved up. And so then my friends were like, giving me the, Dude, you didn't have to move up. You, you got to win this many races before you move. I'm like, ah, I don't need the grief. <laughs> and so I turned out after like three races, won my first expert race and got a second at the next one. And basically I went the whole summer with all first place and one second and one third. And a natural. <laughs> Yeah. Total natural. Well, I think it helped because the, the, the two people I rode with the most were older than me and they were mm-hmm. experts and just chasing them around. You're going to get fast. Right. Right. Yeah. My, uh, my, 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 uh, rabbit was Jason kick. Like I chased oh. that dude until I beat him. And then I was like, all right, cool. It's go time. Now that was my guy. Right. Yep. Like all yeah, the local I races, he was the fastest, the smoothest kid. I'm like, and we became friends. I'm like, I got, I, I got to beat him. Like, that's, that's my benchmark. We all have it. We just don't oh, yeah. necessarily know what it is at the time. But when looking back, I'm like, that was my guy. Like, that was him. Yep. For sure. 
I mean, you were you were teammates with him too at one point. I'm I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, for a short period of time. Yes. Yeah. Um, we'll get to that soon because that's huge, <laughs> like huge. Um, so sponsors. How, who was your first sponsor, and how did that work out? How did that come about? Actually, um, oh, wait, wait, you grew up in Oregon, right? You've been in Oregon the whole time. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I've been here the whole time. I only lived. I lived in L.A. there for about four months when I was riding for Kuahara. And really? four months in LA was enough. I was I've had it with the traffic. I came home. <laughs> it was just like, no, no, <laughs> nobody got time for that. <laughs> I don't, I don't get it either. I don't, it, it's, I mean, I kind of understand it, but at the same time, it's like, I, I can't, and it's beautiful out there, but dude, I can't spend that much time commuting. Like I can't, there's no, yeah, it's too much time away. Yeah. And everything you do out there, you have to have a car. Everything is always 45 minutes an hour away. Right. And even if it's 10 minutes, even if it's a mile away. Like you're yeah, it, it's that's yeah, it. that, that was kind of bothersome. Like I can remember, you know, we'd uh when I live with Russell Byrne, that's we'd go practice at Orange or race at Orange. And because of the traffic, you know, like normally it takes like 20 minutes to drive there. But if we didn't get on that freeway at a certain time, it ended up taking an hour. And then it's like you're standing at the sign up window going, come on. I was like literally almost here before you closed it. Right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So, I, you know, I grew yeah. up in Chicago, so I, I understand navigating the traffic. But, dude, there's no navigating that traffic. Like you're in it. You're in it all the time. It's always busy. Yeah. And it's like yeah. eight lanes wide and you're still in it. You're like, why do you do it's this? Still in. And then you throw in the freeway shooters and the road oh, ragers and yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love visiting. Don't get me wrong. I love going out there and seeing people, but man, I, I don't, I'm good. I'm good. All right. So your first sponsor. First sponsor, uh, another friend of mine who I went to school with the same age that I raced against, he rode for a bike shop and he goes, you need to get on our team. And I was like, well, I was kind of wanting to see if I could get on the bike gallery team. He's like, no, you know, you need to be on our team, you know? And he was just working it. <laughs> and he did. He straight up called, called the bike shop and said, Hey, you, you know, would you be willing to sponsor, you know, Daryl, he's done this, he's done that, you know? And I talked to him for about five minutes. Next thing I know, I was sponsored. And That's it. Over. Uh, yeah, totally cool. And he was a really cool bike shop owner. He was a lot of fun. So Bob's bike shop was my first sponsor. And they were, they were kind of like a family orientated team. Like everybody knew everybody. And mm -hmm. the next thing I know, I had only been racing like three or four months and I'm going to my first national. We're loading up in the van and going. Whoa. Where, and where was that? Um, it was uh, in Tacoma. Well, actually more like Piala, but it was, uh, it was Gary Ellis and Marty Enat's track. <laughs> it was like, like, I was like, like Gary's track? Yeah, because you could you could stand in the park and look up the hill and see the Ellis's house. And no way. Yeah, yeah. and we had crazy. a lot of good times there. Doing like uh, I remember doing like a Grand Prix race they had one summer where they had all these double pointers in a row at all the tracks in the Seattle area, Whoa. and they had a a huge um, like spaghetti feed at their house. And yeah, Ellis's were cool. It, it, it was cool. No and that way. track was phenomenal. I, I liked it. It was a fun track. A lot of jumps. Um, I was kind of basic. It just it um the dirt was really good, and um the layout was you know kind of what you expected for you know late seventies. Um, but uh, just the level of racing going there was that was something else. That was my. You know, you go up there and then it was like, oh, man, this is a little bit bigger in Portland. There are a lot more people. Right. And then to go to a national and it's like, that's Stu Thompson right there. You know, there's that's John Cruz. That's David Clinton. That You know, I was just mouth on the floor. Just, oh, uh, you know. It's so fascinating to hear you say that. Um, the first time I saw Stu, same thing for me. 82 MBL Grands. I was like, whoa, yeah. Stu Thompson. Oh my God, there's Harry Larry, uh, Brent Patterson, like I'm losing my mind. Like, holy, what, 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 this is nuts. And to hear you say that, because that's the category that I have you in when I think about the, the legends of our sport. And people use the term legend to me uh, uh, pretty freely these days. Um, but in my mind, you're in that same category of character. 
same category of guys. I mean, you were the first terrible 10 group, right? Weren't you in that one as yeah. well? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, you guys are still the fastest guys to beat. You, Ellis, Gossero, uh, Richie, like the dudes. Like after that, I'm like, they should have just left that thing alone. Just terrible 10 and don't do it again. <laughs> really good. Um, but it's fascinating to hear you say that. Um, so your career kicks off and it's going fast. Like yeah. clearly it's, 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 you took a hold of something. Um, what was yeah. the first factory sponsor? How did that come about? Um, oh boy. Okay. First factory sponsor. Well, and actually been... what bike were you, what, what bike were you riding when you first started? Oh, um, a PK Ripper. Of course. Well, I'm not. Yeah. Not and it was, yeah. Like, yeah, I was, I was an SE guy. I was all yep. about it. Um, so yeah, that was huge for me too. My first Nash, I got to see PK Ripper and say hi and shake his hand and like, wow, you know, this guy's a badass. I got your bike. I got, you bike, <laughs> yeah, I got your bike. I'm pretty sure I did um, that to you. I'm yeah, pretty sure I was I, like, yo, check out my fame, dude. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's see. First, first uh, it would have been RRS, Riverside Redland Schwinn. They had their own bike, that trick thing, and I had the the eccentric bottom bracket, fixed rear wheel. But you would adjust that thing, right? Mountain bike adjust style the brakes, bracket. yeah. Right. Yeah, that thing was trick. But uh, they they were you know they were a small company because they literally were two big huge bike shops that built their own you know frame and stuff. And so I got sponsored by them. <laughs> Here we go again, another friend. This is this, this a, you're going to hear this a lot. Good. Jeff Rutherford, who rode for them, then he was sponsored by JMC for a period of time. And he quit JMC because he, I don't know, that kid was, he was the nicest kid in the world, but he, like, the way he explained it, he was feeling that pressure. It, like, what, 10, 12, you know, the, the winning pressure. And just because, you know, his own thing, and he was starting to get into motocross. And he's like, dude, he was riding for RS. I was at the fall nationals in the Anaheim convention center. He's like, you know, what's GT doing for you? I was co GT at the support GT at the time. And he's like, dude, I can get you on RS. And sure enough, same thing, small conversation. Next thing I know I'm telling GT. Yeah, well, I'm going to go ahead and ride for RS and they looked at me like, you know, they're probably just shaking it. Why would you do that? You know, you should just be <laughs> keep riding for us until we decide you're worthy. And right. So I started riding for them and uh, rode for them from like September of 80 to February of 81. And that was when my dad had a little conversation with Jim Melton and the team manager Billy Feltz, his dad, and uh, Kim Jarbeau. And the next thing I know, I'm standing in the parking lot and the, the JMC van with the, the trailer and my dad's shaking their hands. Sounds good. And next thing I know, I got a phone call and they're sending me stuff and I'm on JMC. Bam. So, yeah, literally in that short period of time, I went, what? Let's see, it would have been barely two years into the sport and yeah when did you start in 79 80 yeah i started the summer may of se yeah 79 and won my first net i'll almost well actually i tripled almost at my first national i i won my class i won the trophy dash against richie anderson and jeff rutherford and i um at one point i had a shot but i was too green around the edges to know that here's your shot to pass your my teammate who was older than me in the open class and Lee Medlin if I would have just ran it up the inside and I could have tripled but I didn't I just stayed where I was at Ooh, I'm in third in the open class Woo, you know and I didn't care so that was yeah and then within the next year I was factory sponsored and then another four months I was on JMC and then went down that whole road for four years and four months of hanging out at the JMC factory. Yeah. Really? How old, how old were you when you started? Uh, I had just turned 13. Wow. So let, let's go right into JMC because, man, you have to know at this point 
how iconic that brand was and, and how many people still to this day, maybe you don't, man, because you're not on Facebook, are you? See, no, if you, if you no, were, I, dude, there's I, I pay so attention. many. Okay. All right. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's... It, it, it is, you talk about a company that's on a pedestal and a brand and a guy, like, I, it's hard to describe. He stuck to his guns and he right there, it just shows, you know, quality before quantity. That was his thing. And, right. you know, I'm sorry that 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 was definitely his thing because he didn't want to make I felt that like part of me, you know, wishes he would have, you know, made like a kit bike like a lot of the other factories did, you know, where you have it made in China and you sell them for cheap or whatever. But he was just nope, 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 ain't doing it. And and, you know, freestyle. Well, he wasn't about freestyle, really. So, you know, those those were two things he could have he could have easily done, but I get it. He was, you know, he was a race bike company and he was doing what he did best. What was it like <laughs> riding for him? Like what was his approach to you as far as, you know, pressure to win or whatever the case may be? Like, what was that like? I can honestly say there is maybe three or four times in that four, four and a half years that I ever heard, you know, you really need to, pull this one out, you know, because it just, it was never a pressure situation. He just, he, he knew we could do it. He, he, he had a great, great way of handling us. He just, he really did, you know, and he was, he was an awesome sponsor because I never, I never felt I had to win, but I wanted that anyway. You know, every kid on the team did, you know, but, mm -hmm. uh, but far as a, keeping us in a happy environment, he did that. He did it to a T. We were, we were always having fun. Um, maybe sometimes getting in a little bit of trouble here and there. But, you know, he, 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 yeah, he was just a cool dude. I mean, it was by far the best sponsor I ever had as far as like factory teams because he never, he never, you know, made promises he couldn't keep, which, oh, that I've had that happen to me many a times. And that's just, that's a, you know, huge BLD when you're, you're young, you know, and you don't really have, you know, a choice, but to take their word for it, you know? Uh -huh. And so, yeah, he was, he was a great guy to ride for. I never felt pressure, you know, and he was. And, and throughout those years, man, you had so many good teammates as well. Like the whole team, like you, Solon Foster, Jason Kick, um, Carl Butler, like the list goes on. Jimmy Ferret, like dudes that were just so good. And he, yeah. it, was, it was almost like he would find them and not like, they weren't like the mainstream guys, but they were fast enough and they were winning and they had titles and they were just badass. Like, how do you, how did he find these people? Yeah. You know, you know, I, I feel like one of the things he did try to do was like, since you're a small company, try and find guys that are the, the, the hot rider in their area that could represent. And, um, we did have like two levels to the team. There was definitely an A and a B team. Mm. And, but, you know, some of those B team riders every once in a while, you know, they, they would pull off that showing. And the next thing they're, they're on the A team roll into the races with the rest of us. Um, like, okay. You brought up all those names. That was the only time I really felt pressure is when I got on JMC and I realized I am now on the team that Harry Leary, Clint Miller, you know, all these guys from the seventies that I, man, I was just like, they're fast as hell, you know, and they're, they're now they're the top pros. And I'm just like, I've got to fill these shoes. Oh man. So yeah. So yeah. it's kind of yeah. like that. You did get some pressure, I guess a little bit, but yeah. That, but that was outside pressure. That was your own pressure. You're putting yeah. on yourself because you knew yeah. the, the, the foundation that was already laid there. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, that and the bikes are so clean looking. I mean, it was just the, the whole thing. It was, it was fun. All right. Let's get to the bikes, dude. Oh no. Um, <laughs> I mean, look, I'll tell you this story in a minute. When you first got on, what bike were you riding and how did that transfer into your pro model or your design? Um, okay. Um, start, I was riding the black shadow and what, with the teardrop dude. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. And the that was thing is, one. like, me me and Jeff Whiprot and I think, uh, oh, uh, Bart McDaniel, we mm. were we had um, custom ones where he didn't use the, t- the regular teardrop that came on the Black Shadow. He used the elliptical tubing that came on the JMC uh, long frames from back in the day because they the tube was a little bit bigger a little bit thicker you know because jmc's were kind of known for cracking you know the, I, the I, cracked my, my, I cracked my black shadow a few times because yeah. i would go through every about every two and a half to three months i was getting a new frame until he did that and then they were they were they would hold the other and so yeah he had his he had his tricks and so i was like okay he likes customizing and they uh and he'd come out with the JMC handlebars right around the time I started riding for them. And I, uh, what was it? Oh, I remember I didn't like where the brake lever was sitting. And I, I was like, could I get some that are wider? And he, that's when he said, well, how about we call it the Daryl Young bar, Daryl Young design. And so that was the beginning of that. So like I barely rode for him for what, four, four months, not even four months, I don't think. <laughs> And so the handlebar came first, then the next thing, you know, it was like, well, I'll, could I get a fork that doesn't have the rake in it? You know, so it's just straight with the dropouts. So that way, if it bent, you know, I could see if it's bending easier. Oh, okay. Well, how about we what? call it a Daryl Young design fork? And, okay. And then, you know, another year or so down the road. So it was what, uh, it was like uh, September in 83. And that's when he was like, okay. And I was like, you know, my, I kind of, I had, I'd struggled all summer. I went to the world championships, got my ass handed to me on a platter. Didn't defend my number one. I was bummed. And that's when I started noticing, man, I'm, I'm hitting the handlebars with my knees and you know, all these other. And so that's when I was like, can I get a frame? That's just a little longer, you know, like maybe an inch or so. And so, and that's how it happened. He's like, okay, Daryl Young design again. So as a, as an amateur, that's, how I was getting paid because he knew that some of the other amateurs that I was beating, they were getting monthly checks or their parents were. And, and he wanted me to still have an amateur status, a true amateur status. So he'd pay me royalty checks and they would go to my parents and they were putting them in the bank. I I didn't hardly get to touch any of that. (laughs) So, you know, yeah. And it's like a dream come true. I mean, how many kids get into BMX and within a couple of years, you got a handlebar named after you. And then a year later, a fork. And then a year after that, you got a frame and checks are coming in the mail. Then I turned pro. And then that's when I, you know, got to add to that. But yeah, it just, it was, it was a very quick, quick journey from point A to point B. It, I, I never, ever could have imagined that's how it came to be. Yeah. Like, that is so awesome. That's what I mean. He was so easy going. I mean, I'm, you know, really? Okay. Hey, sounds cool. You know, and. Unreal. So, yeah. And, and, and to be in that group, that was the other thing. Like, wow, I have a bike named after me. You know, that took a while to sink in, you know, and right. especially like, cause I'm like, you know, Harry Leary's got the turbo model, you know, Stu Thompson had his name on some stuff and, and, you know, and like Richie had his frame when he was a kid, and yep. there, there's, you know, not too many of them. So yeah, that, yep. that was mind, mind blown during that four years. That's yeah. I'm yeah. blown away right now thinking I knew anything about it. Um, the, I, I grew up on a, on a JMC Black Shadow. That was my first real race bike. That was the first bike that I got that I was really good on, that I was, that I was fast on. Had some sponsors, had to ride some different frames. Um, got to, there's a race here in North Carolina on the Speedway, and I was getting hammered, like, by people that never should be beating me. I'm like, I, what is going on? I couldn't figure it out. A uh, good family friend, his name is Jay Hamby. You may have known him from way back in the day. He was riding for, I don't know who, I can't remember, but he was riding a Daryl Young. And he came over to me in the pits and we were talking to me and my dad and always has been great family friend. Um, he's like, hey, dude, why don't you ride my bike in the next moto? And I'm like, 
dude, I'm not riding your bike. It's huge. I'm like, I'm like, he's like, I think your bike is too small. And I was like, what? He had a gross spurt. Didn't think twice about it. Right. Whatever. I'm like, dude, I'm not right. I already had two eighths, like seventh and an eighth in the motos. I'm, my day is already done. So I'm like, all right, fine. He's got front brakes. The whole handlebars are like, feel like gorilla bars. Cause the bike is just massive. Right. Massive. Uh-huh. Dude, I get on the gate gone. Like I checked <laughs> out and I was so fast. We didn't even get back to the house. And my dad had already ordered a Daryl Young design. Like nice. your bike changed my career. <laughs> like I was at that race going, I'm done. Like I'm done with this. This is ridiculous. Oh. And that made a world of difference so much so that when I did Reynolds racing, I'm like, I need my bikes to feel like that bike did. Like it handles fast. It's light. It's nimble. Um, it, it's, it, Got it. That's how I've always wanted my bikes to feel. And I owe every, every sponsor. I went from being a privateer to ride for MCS. I sent them my Daryl Young so they could make it. They could copy it. So MCS made a bike. They copied the bike. Cause I'm like, nice. I'm not, I'm riding this bike until I can't ride it anymore. And then I got <laughs> taller at some point and I'm like, ah, oh, shoot, I got too tall for it. Wonderful bike though. Like so much fun to ride. It was great. So thank you for, recognize and you're banging your knees on the handlebars too uh, you're welcome my brother <laughs> loved it so good um so then after that what was the when your jmc days ended how did that come about and did was it straight to kuahara after that no it uh <laughs> oof, that was rough it uh i remember i did my last race for them it was peachtree georgia mbl It was like right after my birthday, like the second or third week in May. And um, Jim had already said, yeah, we're probably going to be closing the doors the end of the summer because he just didn't see any way around it. And so it was me and Travis Younger. We were the only two JMC riders who went to that race. And I remember it wasn't even a week after we got back and I got the phone call and he's like, we're closing the doors like now. So I never even had a chance to like get a couple frames or anything. Like it was just done over. And I was <laughs> mind blown. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so then it was, I immediately just, I, I asked bike alley for help because I, you know, like worked there a summer and they had been paying me f- for using my picture in their uh, mail order ads. And so I, you know, gave them a holler and yeah, we could, you know, pay your entry fees and help you how we can. And then, um, Browning two speed, I had a contract with them still. And so they said, well, you know, we'll, we're going to help you out what we, you know, where we can and whatnot. So I ma- managed to make it through the summer doing that. And, uh, then God dang, it was yeah yeah it was a while before i had another decent ride because kuahar didn't come around until like october it was like september october that year and i and once again phone call out of nowhere and it's an, another <laughs> friend of mine that i've known for years uh rock robert cardoza he worked he used to work at sc and road for sc and now he's at Kuahara at Everything Bicycles. And he's, hey, man, we're starting up another Kuahara team. And I heard that you don't have a ride right now. Would you be, in? I'm in, you know, before you can finish. I'm in. I'll take whatever I can get at this point, you know. And uh, so I, I remember going down and doing a photo shoot with Colin Ann for their new bikes and stuff. And did like the, oh, it would have been the Fall National at Lake Elsinore. Mm-hmm. And then and then did the Grands and rode for them till like the next summer. And then that's, I quit cause they, um, they, they were changing my contingency program. And that was the only way I was getting to the next races. Cause they would give me right. 300 for a win and they would double it to cover expenses. And so when they were taking it down to where, well, this, we're going to, you know, and I'm like, Oh no, 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 no. Can't, can't make it on that. That's, that's too much of a struggle. So I just, I felt it was better to just go out on my own again. And, and then I ended up on Excalibur with Carl Butler because Carl gave me a call. (laughs) And, and, you know, that's pretty much how it rolls around here. And, and, uh, and then, you know, on down the line, every, almost every ride 
I've had it's some friend or somebody who knew me just give me that random phone call at the time that I needed it, I guess, you know? Right. Total, total fate thing. Well, you know, I, and, and I think it also speaks to your character and you as a person. Um, you've always been such a good guy to me. And I, I feel that that's who you are as a person. And that obviously other people have felt that too. Because otherwise, why would they call you and want you to be a part of it? This guy's going to be a great representative for our brand. Let's call him. Yep. To me, that's what makes sense. You know, I think uh, what you've done in the past is so transcendent from generation to generation. And I know a lot of people don't know about a lot of our history in BMX, uh, yeah. sadly. But man, I think the last time I saw you in person was in Reno. Pro warm up Sunday morning. Gork, who has been on my show. Thanks, Gork. I uh, was doing a photo shoot with you and Harry Larry coming out of the last turn. This oh, is tabletop. Yeah. You guys were just busting some style. Let's do another one. And I stopped my pro warm up, all breaks, and sat there and watched you guys because I was like, that is my childhood right there. And it was so <laughs> fascinating to see it and so cool. And I was like, this, this is awesome. So awesome. Oh, that um, was awesome. I, I, I'll never forget that. Cause I was, he was like, would you guys be in? Heck yeah. Me and Harry. Oh, I'm on it. You know? And the funny part is you saw how the picture turned out and people were like, were you guys really in that was together? Or were those two separate pictures? And I'm like, no, that's, that's it. Cause we yeah. were thrown down <laughs> Dude, on a little tabletop too. Like it wasn't even that big. And you guys were like, hold on. Wow. Two of the greatest <laughs> jumpers in our sport, Harry, Larry, Carol Young. Um, so it's, awesome to see that together um yeah. and the fact that he was like hey the fourth thought, oh let's let's shoot this for you two guys right now that was killer yep i've got so i've good. got that framed on, you know, on my garage wall really oh so yeah. i said earlier you were you've been in front of a lot of cameras you know from wendy osborne to bob osborne john carr just so many amazing photographers what's been your favorite image Ooh. oh that's you know, honestly, that's easy. Hey, honey, yeah. could you help me out a sec? <laughs> Grab the picture off the wall, the Which black and white. Go oh, through the door. Gotcha. It's the big black and white one. Yep. Bob Osborne. Oh. And, I'll, and, and I'll show you why. Because Gork hooked me up with this. Thank you, Gork. And this hangs oh, on my wow. wall. Wow, Jesus. And this is, he had this hanging in the hallway at BMX Action when I went there and did my first photo shoot on JMC. No way. Yeah. Is that Longkarevich uh, on the inside? Yep. You got Longkarevich, Ellis, and Rich Farside. And if you Ooh. look back here, that's David Marietti between my legs. Come on. Yeah. And so, and that was in the magazine, but he had that, you know, hanging out because he, he would do that with the shots he liked. He would hang them up around the office and I'll never forget seeing it. And then, um, oh man, it was like in the, it would have been the nineties and Gork did a, a, like a BMX hall of fame type thing at the ABA grands. Mm -hmm. And he asked if I could send one of my frames, you know, to hang on the thing. And I had commented on the picture because he had the picture. And when he sent my stuff back, the picture was in the box. Whoa. And I was just stoked. Stoked. So, yeah, that hangs on my wall. That, that would be my favorite one. because That's I'm incredible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Clearly. But but far as favorite photographer, well, that's Wendy Osborne. I'm sorry. She's great. Just because just she was she – was, yeah, you know, every guy had a crush on her. <laughs> I mean, come on, rightfully so. I mean, but she was, yeah, she was a hard, hard and fast second because I have another photo from a photo shoot that I did with her. And you can tell the wind is blowing crazy. And she's like, you know, we could do this tomorrow or, you know, maybe next week. Oh, nah, let's do it. And in that picture, <laughs> funny enough, off to the side, you got, you know, Mike Miranda and, some other dudes, you know, that you would recognize, but yeah, the wind's blowing crazy. And I still threw down that day just cause you know, don't want to let Wendy down. She was cool. No, no. She, she actually shot my first portrait that I was ever in BMX action with. I'm um, at the MBO grands, just me as a little itty bitty kid making a face at her camera. And I was like, Oh, cool. That was cool. Ridiculous. When you think about it, like what? 
Um, my favorite photo of you was from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I don't know if it was the opening spread, but it was you and Charlie Williams. Like, Which one? The BMX Plus or the BMX Action? Oh, shit. That's right. It was two of them. Because two different angles. They're, it's the same photo, but one slightly different. Okay. So I, I think it's from the outside of the turn or the outside of the track. So it was on your side. Charlie's okay. on the inside. And uh -huh. it's you, you know, throwing sideways. Um, so I don't know which one that was. Was that Wendy? Uh, I can't remember who shot which one. I can't. I remember seeing yeah, it twice. I can't now that you mention it. I just remember there was two different ones that you know, and I could. You can tell they were standing in different spots, but they took the same photo. Dude, wicked. So I see that picture, and I, in from my mind, every time I go to Nashville, I'm throwing a kick out over those doubles because that's what Daryl did. Like, <laughs> this is my paying respects to Daryl. Every time I jumped that double when I was a pro, I'd throw my back end back because I'm like, that's what Daryl did. I'm not right joking. I'd be right ripping down the straightaway going, yeah, I got room right now. I'm going to throw one out there. And I'd just come off the lip, throw it out. Cool. That was Daryl. Someone told me, you know what happened after that picture, right? And I was like, what do you get, second, third? I don't know. Was that a semi? I don't know. He's like, no, he crashed, dude. And I went, shut up. Nah, I'm like, didn't. You, no, it, I didn't. I actually crashed in the semi, which was later, because in the picture it's sunny, and the moto I crashed was later in the day, and it was it got dark, and the track was actually wet, and no. that's yeah, that's what it cost me because we had one moto where it started raining. I let air out of my tire, then it started to dry back up, and I landed off that devil, and the rear end just went out from under me, and down I went. And, no. you know, in Nashville, right there on the inside, if you're not up on the berm, that next straightaway, I had to, like, run up that slight little hill trying to get mm -hmm. going, and they're gone. It was done. Oh, you know, and dude. you know that feeling when you're just like, oh, you just blew, you ain't in the main. <laughs> right, right. Was that a semi? Yeah. That that happened into? Holy Yeah. The, the video that I saw, you and Charlie were going so, I'm like, how do their legs move that fast? Like, you guys were going so fast. And you know that that kills me because Charlie he could spin. That was one thing. He would run. He'd run a forty-two sixteen everywhere. Really? And, oh yeah, I I can remember him running a forty-two at, at races where I couldn't go that low if I tried. And and like in that picture, he's probably running one eighties with a forty-two, maybe a forty-three. I'm running one ninety twos with a forty-five. And yeah, but yeah, you had to be on your A game with Charlie because he always got out the gate. That dude Always. was fast. Yeah. Fast. Super fast. I'd love to have him on here. This would be fantastic. Um, but that's one of my favorite photos of you of all time. Like, that was right so on. stylish and so awesome. I mean, you think you had one-piece cranks on, like, those metal pedals that weren't, like, super, like, KKT lightnings or anything. They were just oh, basic yeah. stuff. And you were just so stylish. <laughs> God. It's incredible. Uh, yeah. The day. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because – like the, the only reason I had those cranks on, I had no time to get a new set of cranks. I, I broke my red lines after I came back from the world championships. And I noticed like when I was putting my bike in the box to go to Louisville and I'm like, okay, what do I do? Dig in the box, find some, yeah, oh, these will work. Ain't ran these a long time, but yeah, it was those things you really had to, yeah, you definitely had to do your warm up sprints because otherwise it was like chopping lumber, man. <laughs> watching your pedals in the turns that was always fun <laughs> dude see i used to run really long cranks too me and barry mcmanus so that's why when i did reynolds racing the bottom bracket was at 12 inches because i needed to make sure when i started yep. pedaling i don't want a moped i just want to pedal so that's why we jacked it up so high dude that's hilarious. i like your bikes man dude they're fun a friend of mine had one i'd hop on it every once in a while go rip around i was like oh yeah i could i could ride this i could ride this dude. and shred dude. <laughs> <laughs> you made my day two times in one day. That is ridiculous. Oh, I'm telling you. Well, that's where I, you know, I should have, I should have called you up and rode for you. Dude, I would have <laughs> taken a loan out for real this time. I'm like, yes. Who says no to Daryl Young? Nobody. Oh, man. <laughs> that was awesome. Too funny. Yes. Yeah, that's who says no, my wife. <laughs> well, yeah, I got that too. I, I totally got that at home as well. Same deal. Yeah. Someone's got to put us in check at some point. I mean. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Y you know. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> so what are you doing these days now? I'll let you get out of here in a second. I, I don't want to keep it too long. This has been fantastic. I don't um, Been, well, my COVID project was building, uh, rebuilding my XR75 that sat in a shed for 30 years. Wow. <laughs> and, and got that done. And then lately I've been working on a, a new race bike for me anyway. It's a 2009 KX250F Pro Circuit model. And Whoa. so I'm going to do a little race in this summer because I haven't done that since 85. So <laughs> I might as well just jump back on, you know, let's go. Well, you know, got to keep busy. Um, and then, you know, still working at the same place for the last 20 years. Um, Cold Tab Revolution Publishing. We do um, digital printing, uh, book binding, uh, collated custom tabs, um, and a yeah, a lot of recipe books and stuff during COVID because people are doing like family recipe books. All of a sudden, you know, literally I in this last year, I've done like 10 different orders of like family recipe books, you know, just, really? you know, reconnecting and but yeah. And then uh, we've also done like in the past uh, some up and coming comic book um, stuff for local local youngsters that are doing their thing and nice so yeah it's been it's been kind of nice to, we i've been fortunate enough to be working the whole time during covid mm -hmm. um, my wife wasn't as fortunate because she's a hairstylist so they had all the restrictions stuff but she's she's back in business in her own place and uh dealing with uh what well, we're gonna be we're gonna be yeah we're gonna be grandparents <laughs> what uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Our, our daughter is due in July. Amazing. Yeah. And, and then my son, Tosh, he, he's into the car thing. He's, he's got a Subaru and that's his thing, you know? And Dude, that's uh, awesome. And he still rides, he still rides skate park and stuff. And he's, the kid's got style. He's, he's, of course he he, but he's, way bigger than me that's all for how big he is that's what i'm amazed at how much finesse he has because he's like 240 pounds six foot two yeah six foot two and yeah he he's a big kid he was a hell of a rugby player too <laughs> oh i bet so I bet. so yeah when you see him thrown down on a bike it's like because yeah we went riding a while back and i was like he is just he, you know, because when he was younger, you know, a little kid, it was no big deal. But now I watch him and I'm like, man, he's still got it. He's very agile for a big guy. Very impressive. That's awesome. So do your kids know like the, the, the your, your history in BMX? Do they know the stuff? More or less. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Um, not it, too many finite details. Yeah, not too many finite details, <laughs> but uh, they, they know, they know. Um, the funny one was like my sister um she was doing something on the computer and and one of my nieces or something sent her something and she's like i had no idea my little brother was that famous you know because she just hilarious. was racing those little bmx bikes you know <laughs> he's, he's off racing Carol's always off racing somewhere and so yeah yeah that's it's it's kind of funny yeah daryl young is global this dude's not just local he's, he's global are you kidding me uh, that's amazing that is amazing. Well, listen, man, thank you for your time today, for your, your friendship, uh, always being so cool to me back in the day when I was just a little rug rat bugging you because I wanted to be, a, I wanted to be on JMC so bad, dude. That was my squad. I wanted to be on there. Um, and it's been a pleasure, man. I'm so glad that we, re we reconnected and you were able to make some time to chat with me on this Easter Sunday, dude. Oh, thank you, man. I've totally enjoyed this. And you're one hell of an individual. Ah, and believe me, I've, I've seen some of your interviews and stuff, and I get stoked. Just like when I seen you on ESPN, I was like, oh, that's my boy. <laughs> Look at, that's him, man. Craig's on TV. <laughs> I loved it. Dude, it's fun. I enjoy doing this stuff, man. And, and there's, there's, there's still stuff that I want to keep doing with this. So we're going to oh, it's keep awesome. doing this project and, and go with it. And, and, and again, Thank you. I can't, I can't thank you enough for that foresight. I'm, hey, I need a longer bike. I'm telling you, dude, it changed my career because I was done. Like, I was like, I've had it. These fools should not be beating me ever, <laughs> ever.
ever. Uh, and then I changed bikes. I'm like, oh, yeah, you'll never beat me again. This is the end of it. Right okay. on. Right on. It, so. well, thank you so much. This has been fun, definitely. Absolutely. And thanks for well, sharing that photo. That was killer. And, and I got to get one plug in here for my BMX yes. museum, guys. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. I'll make sure that we tag them and let them know when this is coming out, too. Thanks, man. Uh, thank you. So if you guys like what you're seeing, please make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, subscribe there as well. Daryl, you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for sharing everything. And then I'll, I'll talk with you soon. You as well, my friend. <laughs>